What an exciting time, brethren. Take a look at this picture. This is a prophecy spoken of in Isaiah chapter 11. And we see a lion laying down with a baby lamb. And, of course, we know this as the original intent of God's creation in the uh, Garden of Eden. This was all supposed to be a common occurrence. Uh, everything in harmony, everyone and every uh, beast and being was getting along perfectly, and there was no, no trouble, no sin. Everything was blissful. And uh, so we want to take up a study today of Isaiah chapter 11. So we think it's very timely right now because of the events happening around the world. And it points to a time where Isaiah 11 is going to be appearing, uh, we believe, very, very soon. So I think it's very important for us to go over this chapter right now and, and learn some things that would uh, be helpful for us to, to know. We have prayed. We ask that you do the same. Claim the promise of John 16, 13, as we always request. And after you've done that, you can resume the video. And uh, the Lord will be faithful. For the Spirit of truth shall guide us into all truth. Okay, so the verses that we're going to go over in this study is Isaiah 11, 6 to 12. And uh, verse 6 says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Here we see again the, the, the plain prophecies that we showed in the prior picture of the animals getting together and being friends and in total harmony. But we want to pay close attention to the last part of this verse. A little child shall lead them. This is a very good clue to knowing the time that we're going to soon find out about this prophecy. Isaiah 11 is speaking of a certain time. and We want to know uh, when that time will be. So we're going to go into this a little more. Now, when we read those those uh, those words in Isaiah 11, uh, 11, 6, we, we also come to the conclusion, many Christians do, and in fact, many uh, Seventh-day Adventists as well, that that is speaking of the new earth. Okay, so we see a picture of the new earth and a glorious time of uh, beauty and, and uh, animals together and so forth. So when, um, when we read that, that is the understanding that we're speaking of the new earth. But let's continue. But we have something to bring out now, and that is Scripture and the Spirit of Prophecy both confirm that we are to grow up like stall-fed calves, Malachi 4.2, in heaven prior to the new earth made new. Okay, so we have to understand that this is something that we need to, to discuss. And it says this in Malachi 4.1-2, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yes, all that do wickedly, shall, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. It shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Malachi 4, 1-2. So we see that the scriptures do, do indeed say that during this time when the Lord comes in the clouds of glory and the world becomes uh, <clears throat> burned up, as we know, the wicked are dead and uh, the righteous are taken up to heaven. This is the Seventh-day Adventist belief that we have. Uh, we see that what happens? The people shall go and grow up as calves of the stall. So there's not going to be any uh, non-growing in the heavenly kingdom, the heavenly uh, courts in heaven. So we have to keep that in mind from Scripture. Then we, we have a confirmation of that in Great Controversy, page 645. The moral corruptible form, devoid of comeliness, once polluted with sin, becomes perfect, beautiful, and immortal. All blemishes and deformities are left in the grave. Restored to the tree of life in the long-lost Eden, the redeemed will grow up, Malachi 4.2, to the full stature of the race in its premenial pre glory. The last lingering traces of the curse of sin will be removed. In 
Christ's faithful ones will appear in the beauty of the Lord our God, in the mind and soul and body reflecting the perfect image of their Lord. Great Controversy, page 645. So once again, we have more evidence that once the, uh, the righteous are taken away from this earth, in the heavens there shall be growing up. So any babies, any little children are going to stay that way during the thousand years in heaven. So we, we have this point clearly established now that there will not be any children in the earth made new. Verse 7 says, And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. So we see another picture here of... Uh, children playing and the animals with them and uh, just beautiful beautiful time together with the uh, with the animals and the, the freedom and, and, and peacefulness of everything verse 8 and 9 says the nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Verses 8 and 9. So here again we see a little kid, <clears throat> just a little wean one, uh, uh, just just uh, a, few, a few years old, uh, playing with a snake in his, his own habitat. So we see that this is going to be a, a beautiful time, a special time, the only time that can be called the Lord's heavenly time or the Lord's beautiful Eden time, you know, how he intended to make us be all in harmony. But we want to point out <clears throat> that this little child right here, as we already learned, cannot be playing with his snake in the earth made new. It's got to be another time. And then we have some important references that we need to discuss. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Matthew 22, verse 29. <clears throat> so we see clearly that our Lord says that there's not going to be any marriages after this uh, earth is done with. At that point, all marriages will be over. So, we know in heaven, we know in the earth made new, that there shall not be marriages any longer. No more new, new births, new children from the human race. And then we have Maranatha, page 369. There are men today who express their belief that there will be marriages and births in the new earth. But those who believe the scriptures cannot accept such doctrines. The doctrine that children will be born in the new earth is not a part of the more sure word of prophecy. The words of Christ are too plain to be misunderstood. They should forever settle the question of marriages and births in the new earth. So our key point is that children and babies will not exist in the earth made new. Isaiah 11 is speaking of what time then? So if we know, as we read, that little children are playing with snakes uh, in, in their holes and uh, the, uh, the lion is laying down with the, the young sheep and the uh, lamb and so forth, <clears throat> when is Isaiah 11 speaking of? What time is that? What day will this take place? And we read, In that day there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. So right here, we're getting the first great clue about the time. And uh, forgive me, brethren, I forgot to put in there uh, what... Uh, what quote that is, and that is uh, <clears throat> Isaiah 11, verse 10. 
So we underline the part there that is very key for us to know at this time. For the Gentiles shall seek him. So we need to know, again, we found out that the children won't be in the earth made new. Will there be Gentiles in the earth made new? Let's continue. Are there to be Gentiles in the earth made new? Okay, here's our answer. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven of God, from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. Also she had a great and high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the, at the gates, the names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, three gates on the west. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Revelation 21, verses 10 to 14. Our key point here in knowing this is that all new members, new earth members, then shall be children of Israel and one of the tribes of the bloodline or adoption. No Gentiles on the earth at this time. So we see clearly that this time cannot be in the new earth simply because there shall be no Gentiles at that time. So again we ask, what time can this be when there's little children and there's Gentiles on the earth? the same time with these beautiful things happening. This wonderful time is the recovering of his people. So here we have another great clue. It shall come to pass in that day, and that's the day that Isaiah just described in the other verses, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt, from Pathros and Cush, from Elon, Shinar, from Hamath, and the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Verse 11 and 12. Here we see a picture of the similar uh, exodus that shall happen in this time that Isaiah speaks about and it the Lord says a second time so this is the first time that the uh, people of Israel uh, came out of Egypt and this was known as the great exodus that Moses uh, uh, was uh, called upon to lead and be uh, God's servant to help the people come out and go to the kingdom so this is the time where as we said, this is the original time, but this is going to be repeated. There's going to be a second one of these happening in the world very soon, according to Isaiah. So the answer to our question is this. This all takes place during our current world during probationary time. The children of Israel, his remnant church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, Testimonies, uh, Volume 9, page 164 shall be gathered from the four corners of the earth. These are not the rank and file, but the outcast, those who have not been well received with the mother church. Many shall be professors of the final Lord's rod message. Micah 6, 9. So, when we understand that God will recover the remnant of his people, of Israel. We understand a Seventh-day Adventist strictly from Testimonies, Volume 9, page 164. We apologize, we forgot to put the, the, the page number, but it is, it is 164. That you will find that the Spirit of Prophecy says that the Seventh-day Adventist is the Israel of today. So once we know that, we can see that God is going to do this work of recovering from the four corners of the of the world and who does he recover outcasts brethren he does not recover the rank and file of the mother church 
These ones have been outcast. They've been rejected. They've been scorned at. They've been looked down, ridiculed, because they have a message to the church that has not been wholly accepted. And that message is the final Lord's rod message, Micah 6, 9, as well as Malachi 4, 5. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt, and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. Hosea 11, verse 10 and 11. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it shall lay desolate, in the sight of all that pass by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I the Lord built the ruined places and plant that which was desolate. I the Lord have spoken it, and I will do it. Ezekiel 36 Verses 34 to 36. Beautiful, brethren. This is something the Lord says without any ifs and buts. But I will do it. Do what? He will restore his holy land. In front of where? In front of the heathen. Okay, this is the land of, pro this is the time of probation in the holy land. So this is beautiful. Isaiah 11 is speaking of this beautiful time when the Lord will do this in front of the heathen to show the people that he is the Lord. He can do what he prophesied that he would do. So our last question is, why is this Isaiah 11 kingdom in the Holy Land? It is found in Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Oh boy, brother, this is so beautiful. When I first came into the Seventh-day Adventist denomination understanding teachings, when I read that, I was like everyone else. I was thinking he's speaking of the final kingdom in heaven. But brethren, look at this closely. After what we learn in Isaiah 11, the Lord is about to make a witness to the nations. He's about to show the lamb and the lion and the kid playing with all these dangerous things, being together as one. And what is that for? A witness unto all nations. This is the kingdom that he's talking about. Come into her. This is what he's going to do in the loud cry proclamation. Is He's going to have... This as a witness. This is the kingdom he's talking about. Now, yes, we're going to join that kingdom and be translated into the heavenly kingdom. But it first starts, as Isaiah 11 shows us, here on earth in probationary time. Isn't this beautiful? Amen. This is something that the Lord has said he's, he's going to do. And as we've read, he will do it. So we wanted to bring this Isaiah 11 chapter... Uh, chapter 11 Isaiah uh, study to you today so you could get a good understanding. I know that many of us, particularly us Seventh-day Adventists, we read that and we say, oh, isn't that beautiful about the, the heavenly kingdom to come? No, no, brethren. We have to be close thinkers and logical reasoners. And uh, we have to sit down and, and carefully look at the whole context of what it's saying and add up each and every inspired word. If we do that, like we've done in this study, you'll see the truth of the matter. And the, the Lord says, study to show yourself approved. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the, the word of truth. So we have to divide it. We have to look at it, and we can see, brethren, that this is beautiful. So if we are today working towards this end, if we're working for his kingdom, then we shall clearly know what the Lord meant when he said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And this is the next phase of the kingdom in the Holy Land. So let's be ready. Let us prepare for this. 
And let us dwell on these things. Let us think of these beautiful things that is about to take place. These times right now are very scary, but they're all leading up to that gigantic world war over the Holy Land. And when we remember back in these quotes, uh, just a few quotes ago, we read that the land shall be desolate. Well, why is it going to be desolate? Because of that gigantic war. And people are going to pass by and say, that was the desolate land, look at it now. And the Lord will do such things as a witness to all nations. So let's praise his name and uh, continue to be faithful. And we shall, by God's grace, make it to the kingdom. Thank you, brethren, for listening. And until next time, God bless you.